Fanfare, performed by the Brass Ensemble of the Utah Symphony. The musicians joined community leaders as they officially opened the newly renovated plaza of a Bravanel Hall this week. The orchestra opened its 75th season tonight, and art specialist Carol Makita is live from the new plaza with a look back. Carol? Today, the word vibrant describes the Utah Symphony. 85 full-time professional musicians perform 175 concerts a year. What began as a community orchestra in 1940 achieved national recognition under maestro Maurice Bravanel, music director for 32 years. That's exactly what I wanted to see, whether I could myself mold an orchestra into being a good orchestra. During his tenure, the orchestra had four international tours, released over 100 recordings, and developed an extensive music education program influencing generations. The Utah Symphony has performed in some of the most prestigious concert halls in the world. In 1979, the musicians received the gift of a permanent home appropriately named a Bravanel Hall. The beauty of the hall and its state-of-the-art acoustics attracted top musicians to the orchestra over the years. Assistant concert master David Park wanted to become a musician here as a student in California. About three, four years later, that came true. <laughs> so it was really a wonderful story and I'm so excited to be here, especially now. It's such an exciting time again. Joseph Silverstein became music director in 1983. A dozen recordings and a European tour are part of his legacy. If I do my job as music director, conduct the music well, rehearse the music well, choose the music well, and keep the morale of my players high, that the seats in Symphony Hall will be filled. Boston Pops conductor Keith Lockhart became music director in January of 1998. I think we have here one of the great orchestral legacies in this country. He is credited with attracting top flight musicians, creating the Deer Valley Music Festival and leading the orchestra during the Olympics opening ceremony. The orchestra, more than once over the years, struggled with financial shortages. As a solution, Lockhart and Ann Ewers helped merge the Utah Symphony and Opera in July of 2002. In 2009, maestro Terry Fisher became the seventh music director. He now leads the orchestra into a new era. I hope this anniversary is not an end, but that it's a step, a uh, galvanizing step, to um, help us to continue to grow. The Utah Symphony remains the state's premier arts organization and a shining example of success throughout the country and the world. Carol Makita, KSL 5 News. Thanks, Carol. The Utah Symphony just released a new Mahler recording and will perform in Carnegie Hall in 2016. All right. A lot of milestones. All right, Kevin.